Good day. My name is Johan Hubert, and I would like to give you a little bit more information about the Honors Module BCS 780, Industrial and Systems Engineering Research. I want to do that based on a very brief agenda, where I will talk about the background, the reason for BCS at Honors level, talk about the process and the key dates that you need to adhere to, briefly run through what the assessment procedure uh, would, will look like for your final deliverable and then anticipate some questions and give you some answers that you may, may still have. Any advanced degree from our final year uh, or our undergraduate program until your doctorate, every advanced degree requires that you have a research component and this is a requirement from the Department of Higher Education. But this is a real opportunity for you to study a coherent uh, a designated area of coherent knowledge that is advanced and that is supervised by a specialist. Uh, so you do this under supervision in one of the focus areas by somebody in that focus area. So you really get to immerse yourself um, and put in quite a lot of effort and really gain the depth. Note that this is a 32 credit module, which implies that you need to put in at least 320 hours just to pass the module. If you really want to excel, you need to go over and beyond the required expectations and really immerse yourself in a, this specific field. But this is great stuff. It means you can really find your field in a particular topic and you can actually uh, lay the foundation for you to build your masters on top of it. In fact, some of the topics are scoped in such a way that your final deliverable will be a proposal that you can present directly to the department and then immediately carry on in that field with your master's degree which means you've got quite a lot of traction. Other topics, on the other hand, will focus on a specific problem that you need to solve, but in the process you will immerse yourself, really understand the, the content and the material, and that in itself will open up opportunities for you to consider research questions related to a possible and a potential master's degree. So really pick your honors modules and your BCS topic in such a way that you're cognizant and you're aware of possible master's topics that you can, can pursue. So what is the process? There's essentially three phases, and the first one I'm going to go into a little bit more detail. First, you need to um, have a supervisor allocated, and for that, you need to find a topic that you actually qualify for. And on the next slide, I'll actually talk about how do you qualify, what are the core modules are, and what you need to do to complete before you can register for BCS. Suffice to say that there are core modules and you need to complete at least one of them if you want a topic in that specific field. It's very important that you actually interact with a potential supervisor. Every topic is scoped and published by one of the supervisors who in turn are associated with one of the focus areas and it's important that you actually familiarize yourself with the topics that are available and gain a little bit more um, information by making an appointment and actually visiting or corresponding with one of the supervisors. If they don't know who you are, what your interests are, they would likely consider somebody else if there's, if there's more than one student interested in a topic. So make yourself known, familiarize yourself with the material, um, and make an appointment to really make an informed choice about your topic. You will be required on the ClickUp uh, system, which is our content management uh, system at the University of Pretoria, to go online and complete um, your preferences, your first, second, and third choice of a topic, and submit it online by a given due date. And the due dates for every semester for BCS is published in the study guide, so please make sure that you familiarize yourself with the content. The study guide, in turn, is also available on ClickUp. We then, internally in the department, will do the topic allocation um, by the, the specific kind of deadline after you've submitted it. And it's very important that as soon as the topic is allocated to you, that you make an appointment with your supervisor and negotiate the weights for the final assessment criteria. The criteria is known up front, um, so there's no hidden things that we may be looking for. Uh, but we had to be kind of creative in a way that we agreed on, this is, I think it's about 15 criteria that we're going to assess students on. These are the 15 criteria that they really need to master. But the projects actually do differ. 
Some are a lot more quantitative and go into problem solving. Others are a lot more qualitative and actually may, for example, only focus on the literature review. So all the topics are different in different combinations and you need to upfront negotiate the weights for each one of those criteria with your supervisor. And that is a means for your supervisor to communicate his or her expectations in terms of what really carries weight and how much weight it carries in the particular topic. The second phase is a submission checkpoint, which is kind of a midway hurdle where your supervisor will indicate whether they think you are on par uh, and will actually make the final deliverable, which then is phase three, is the final uh, report or article or proposal depending on your supervisor's expectations. And that will be communicated to you as well. This is the document that ultimately earns you marks uh, and that will be graded internally and externally and the grades will be published um, to administration. We talked about the core modules. The different focus areas in industrial engineering here at the University of Pretoria um, actually have, each one of them have got multiple honors modules from which you can actually choose, uh, and they are presented in the first and second semester. Um, in the first semester, for example, we have BBA 781, uh, which is Enterprise Engineering uh, and Research Methods. We have BLK 781, which is a 16 credit module, um, Supply Chain Processes. We have Operations Research, uh, 32 credit module, and Simulation Modeling, uh, which is also a 32 credit module. Just note that although these are presented in the first semester, typically they are not presented every year. For example, operations research and simulation, we alternate one year the one, next year the other one. Um, so just familiarize yourself in the postgraduate guide that is available on the department's website. You will find the postgraduate timetable and there it will be indicated what modules are presented during that year or that specific semester. In the second semester, we have design and analysis of experiments, a 16 credit module, BDE. We have BPZ. Uh, manufacturing processes and control systems, uh, a 32 credit module, we have supply chain design, a 16 credit module, and we have op um, solution algorithms in operations research, which is also a 32 credit module. Again, please note that some of these modules may not necessarily be presented every year. So plan and schedule your modules accordingly. And the best people to advise you will be the presenters of those modules who are also the potential supervisors on, on the different topics you are required to at least complete one of these core modules if you want to be considered for a topic in that field. You cannot complete operations research, for example, and then think you qualify and want to apply for a topic in enterprise engineering, although you have not completed the core module of BBA 781. Because as a supervisor, we require you to have the foundational, the fundamental knowledge, um, which is at more at an advanced level, that we will need you to complete that particular topic. So please make sure that you choose your modules and you time them in such a way that you build BCS on top of your chosen core modules in your field of interest. How will we actually do the assessment? Well, first in terms of the topics and how we allocate them, it's we do take your preferences into account. We ask you to list them in your first, second and third choice. Um, and very often there are some projects that are oversubscribed. There are more than one person who actually indicate um, their, uh, their topic of choice. And then we look at, at past academic performance, um, specifically in the core modules involved. But we also kind of look generally at your, at, your, at your academic record because unfortunately past performance is the best predictor for, for future performance. We also take our supervisor capacity into account. Each supervisor can only um, supervise so many uh, projects every year at, at honors level, and we try and get the load balance correctly, depending on the interest in the different topics. The submission checkpoint is simply the supervisor's opinion. It's a yes, no, uh, and they will indicate as soon as the topic is allocated and you make an appointment, they will indicate what they expect um, at this particular kind of deadline. Some of them require you uh, to apply for ethical clearance or have your ethical clearance application ready. Others will indicate that there must be a conceptual model ready. 
but it's simply there, yes or no, to indicate whether you can carry on with the module or whether you are, um, have not made sufficient progress by the deadline. And this is usually in the middle of the semester um, in, in which that particular BCS module is, is presented. And then finally, there is a formal rubric for the final submission. Again, as I mentioned, there are about 15 criteria. Each one of them are independently assessed based on a 0, 1, 2, 3 scale. In terms of the assessment, please take note of the deadlines again in the study guide. If you miss the deadline, for example, for, for your final submission, it is important that you, that you know that if you miss that deadline, you will have to re-register for the module uh, even though you carry on on the same topic and you submit it one month or two months, uh, 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 two months later, you'll have to re-register for the module in the subsequent semester and pay the module fees again. So please take the deadlines seriously um, because we need to arrange external examiners uh, as well. So there's a lot of logistics behind, behind the process. A zero out of three means that either the criteria is not met or has not been addressed at all in your particular deliverable. So if you were required to, to look at a specific research methodology and it's not addressed or research methodologies in general are not addressed, your supervisor can opt for a zero out of three. If you have done something um, but you're not uh, competent in this, that specific criteria, uh, there's serious attention needed and remedial action is required, your supervisor can actually consider giving a one out of three. If you adhere to the required, um, or if you adhere to the requirements and you meet the required uh, competency, then uh, you can earn yourself a two out of three. And if you've really excelled and you've exceeded our communicated um, expectations or what the required level of competency is and you exceed that, you can earn yourself a three out of three. Um, the 0, 1, 2, 3 scale works well because it's very difficult to justify why you give somebody a 72 versus a 75, um, but it's quite clear and quite convincing to say this requires serious attention or that this is fine. All 15 criteria can roughly be categorized into what I call three different sciences. Uh, there's actually more than one science involved when we actually do research. The first one is what I call the science of packaging. How well have you put all of this work together in a way or in a format that your reader or your examiner, internal, your supervisor or your external examiner, that they can actually appreciate the effort that you've actually put in? How have you packaged it? What is the story that you're actually telling? So we look at the layout, we look at the style, the format, the language, the structure, the length, the consistency of your referencing, um, the look and feel of your document. But it also has to do with the quality of your visualizations. How do you interpret and package your data analysis? How do you communicate your results and your interpretation? How concrete are the examples? How well are they illustrated? Do you tell a consistent story? How well do you package it? You can't package nonsense. Um, it must, if you have got good content and you package it well, that's a recipe for, for success. But there's also the science of the method. And this is about the rigor of the process that you actually follow. It's the roadmap for you to get things done. The different focus areas have got different research methodologies, and each one of these, um, or different methodologies, are in some cases more appropriate in certain areas than in other areas. And your supervisor will provide you guidance in terms of where you can actually look um, at or look for the different methodologies. But it's your responsibility to acquaint yourself, to study the different research methodologies and justify why you pick a particular one, and then apply that methodology diligently. And that brings in the rigor of your process, the rigor of, of your project. So that's the science of the method. And yes, then there's the science of the content. And this is why you need the core modules as well, because you need the actual content, the material, the, the technology to actually uh, build a project around. Uh, but it's only one of the three sciences. There's the science of packaging, the science of the methodology or method, and the science of the content. And you need to be cognizant of these three, address them all, and our 15 criteria are spread over these three different sciences.
So let me try and anticipate some of the questions that we've had in the past and that you might still have. The first one is, what are the communication channels? Officially, ClickUp is our content management system at the University of Pretoria. You can find it at clickup.up.ac.za. As soon as you're registered for the BCS module, you will have access to it. And all of the announcements, all of this, uh, the material, the study guide, the topics, and the assignments where you need to submit online will be made available via ClickUp. If you're not re yet registered for the BCS module, I highly recommend, well, in general, that you familiar familiarize yourself with our postgraduate guide, which is available on the department's website at ie.up.ac.za. And navigate to the postgraduate study guide where you'll find the timetable, descriptions of the module, and in general, the entire process of um, all of our graduate degrees, from honors, masters, all the way to your doctorate. And then most importantly is that you communicate with your supervisor directly. That is the person who will give you the, or will communicate their expectation what they require of your, of your project in, in BCS, of that particular topic. What they want as deliverables, as the different milestones, and what should be included and what should be excluded out of your project. Um, Different supervisors communicate using different media. Some use Skype, some um, respond to emails, some like to be phoned. Um, some have got electronic calendars that you need to book online. Um, so familiarize yourself, and it's, it's very important that you, that you understand and adhere to that as soon as possible. Um, and just ease the communication with, with your supervisor. You will rarely communicate with a module coordinator for BCS. Um, that individual is responsible for integrating the marks, organizing the external examiners. Um, your main kind of port of call will be your supervisor once the topic has been allocated. Or the supervisors while you're still in the process of identifying a relevant topic. Next question, what about ethical clearance? Uh, why, when, how? As soon as you use survey data or questionnaires as source material, as actual data in your research, you are required by the university to apply for ethical clearance. You cannot do it directly. Your supervisor will have to submit the application, but there are specific supervisors that already expect you to prepare the application um, for the project and submit the application to them, the supervisors, as the intermediate deliverable in the middle of the semester. So please make sure that you familiarize yourself with the procedure and the documents, which are all available on the Faculty of Engineering, Built Environment, and Information Technologies website under the Research Ethics Committee. If you have interviews and you talk to people at a company just to familiarize yourself with the process, to gain knowledge, to gain an understanding of the process, that is not um, subject necessarily to ethical clearance because it, you just use that to gain an understanding or gain knowledge. The interviews itself is not source data. If you work with sensitive data, I highly recommend that you discuss with your supervisor about applying for ethical clearance because very often, um, sensitive data. Uh, you need to be very clear on how you will deal with it ethically. Um, how secure do you handle the data? How do you anonymize the data? How do you um, ensure that the data is not accessed by anybody um, unauthorized, that you back up the data, and that you ultimately actually destroy the data once you're actually finished with it. And that gets addressed in the application for ethical clearance. There are specific deadlines. The committee said about once a month. Um, and about a month later, you will get a written response. You are not allowed to start with the project and gather the field data or field work unless you already have that written approval. You cannot apply for ethical clearance in arrears, and if you have data that is not authorized, it can be withdrawn or excluded from your research, and it may render your project null and void 
and then it's game over and you're back at square one. So please take it very seriously um, and discuss it with your supervisor and whatever their expectations are with regards to this. But they ultimately need to apply and submit the application to the ethics committee. Are the projects theoretic, uh, kind of paper-based, or are they practical? Well, they depend from one topic to the next. Uh, as I mentioned, the supervisors scope these projects. Some of them are part of, of their research streams. Those are active research projects that they are pursuing. Um, and then it's very real, it's very relevant, uh, and they've got very high expectations in terms of what they want uh, to put on the table or have you put on the table as a result. Um, in other cases, even though it's part of real projects, it may be focused more on getting a really good understanding of the relevant literature in that field. And in that case, it may be more theoretical, especially if it's going to lead towards a master's degree. Then you don't have to solve the problem yet, but you have to have a very sound and solid understanding of the literature and the material. So discuss it with your supervisor and look at the project descriptions when you make your choice. I've completed a core module, uh, for example, operations research, but I did it while it was still a 16-credit module. Can I register now for BCS? Again, it will depend on the topic and on the supervisor. If we take this example of operations research, there was some new content introduced, like dynamic programming, when the module moved from a 16-credit to a 32-credit module. So if you're interested in a project that deals with dynamic programming, you will be required to have taken the new 32 credit module as a core uh, and not the original 16 credit module where dynamic programming was not addressed. So it depends on the content that is covered and the content of the topic. If it is stochastic programming or multi-objectives, which was dealt with in the 16 credit modules as well, then the supervisor may well um, allow you to apply for a particular topic. So clarify it with the supervisor, again emphasizing the importance that you get into contact with a potential supervisor as early as possible.